I'm hoping that this is a good use of your time. Uh, thanks to Donald and the guys at INOG, and thanks to my co-workers in Ireland who thought it was a good idea to bring a very strong Spanish accent speaker uh, to Ireland. Yay! Uh, from Venezuela. Um, very happy to be here. A uh, very cool venue uh, to the guys. It's, it's the best venue I've been. Uh, very exciting. And what I say, I think more and more exciting is to talk about uh, a new piece of innovation that we are just releasing to the market at Cisco. And it has to do with segment routing. And you will hear the guys who invented segment routing, like Clarence Fields Fields, all the time, is we're looking to simplify the network. And we truly are. You can count with your fingers the number of operators who deploy full mesh RSVPTEs or big time traffic engineering deployments. With this innovation, we try to make one more step and I truly believe, and I hope you will agree with me, we're going to take TE to the masses. It's going to be so simple that everybody would like to run it yesterday. So why are we here? We're here to answer questions that many of you may have asked before, such as trying to imagine that you could actually ask your IGP to compute a path among a subset of your routers in your IGP process. Fancy word these days, a network slice. Asking your IGP to compute a path that perhaps minimizes the delay to destinations among a subset of routers. We're asking the IGP to compute a path that uses only encrypted links over a subset of your routers. That's the type of challenges that we're trying to make real. And is now all possible? We're going to introduce to you the latest member of the SRTE family, SR Traffic Engineering family, called SRIGP Flexible Algorithms. I'm going to take you through a half an hour roller coaster, five minutes to get you excited. Hopefully we're going to do that and understand what it does. Then we're going to bore you for maybe eight minutes to explain how it works. TLVs and blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to try to get you back up with the use cases. I think the use cases really uh, uh, bring the appeal of this solution. And hopefully you're going to find some synergy with what you have been dreaming on doing. So first section. How many, how many of you have actually been following or keeping tabs with segment routing? You raise your hand. Huh, not that many. Um, well, we have one slide to recap segment routing there. Uh, but you have to at least understand the very basics. It's really an architecture. What we do with segment routing is we bring source routing to IP MPLS, or we bring source routing to IPv6 transport networks. And we do that, while we do that, we remove protocols from the network, we remove LDP or RSVPTE for label distribution. And now, if I want to forward packets through the MPLS or the IPv6 network, I put all the state at the source, hence source routing. And the state is represented by MPLS labels or a stack of labels or a, a number of IPv6 headers inside of my routing header extension. If you look at one example of that, the topology I have behind me, router number four has a loop pack, 4.4.4 slash 32. It has a label 16,004. Have to make it easy for our brain to remember that. That label was decided by you. This is a global MPLS label value. So now within my IGP, ISIS or OSPF will distribute the prefix and the label, and all the routers will compute shortest path to that destination. So if route number five wants to send traffic to four, he will follow the shortest path and push the label 16,004. If router number two wants to get to four, he will do the same and push the same label. Router number three, same thing. Now, I leave the most interesting for last, router number one. Router number one has ECMP to four. Now he will push the same label across both of the ECMP next hops. So now you realize 
ECMP LSP pushing the same label. This label is now a global MPLS label value. Operation people will love you because now you have an LSP that stays with the same label swap until the last pop. If you have the people that want to program the network with a controller, the controller just, if I just need to go to four following the shortest path, my logic is trivial. Anybody, I have to tell them to push the label 16,004 and I'm done. I have my shortest path to four. So this is the, the most important principle of segment routing and we call that instruction, the label 16004, that follows SPF to 4, we call it the IGP prefix SID. Very powerful, but it can only do one thing, follow the IGP shortest path according to the computation of ISIS or OSPF. Very powerful thing, but it does only one thing. What we're bringing now is with flexible algorithm, we're bringing you a customizable prefix SID you will decide what that prefix seed will do. <laughs> and hence the name flex, algo. We're talking about a IGP algo variance where ISIS or OSPF will compute according to what you told the router to do. For example, you can ask the router to minimize on IGP metric. Okay, big deal, they do that today. To minimize the delay to the destination. You can tell ISIS to also include or exclude properties of links like admin groups or affinities or SRLGs. So now the ISIS or OSPF computation will cater to your needs and they're going to be what I call your macro traffic engineering needs and you will see that in the use cases. Now to really see the the concept, I hope that these two pictures in the back will help you. In one case, I have a customer that has eight routers. Is it five? Eight routers, yes, eight routers. And I'm trying to have ISIS or OSPF compute paths only using the routers behind the red shadow area. So the routers that you see in the bottom half of the picture. And in this particular case, I want to tell my IGP, compute a path that minimizes the IGP metric to every destination in that red shadow area and avoids the brown links. And hence, you see that blue line. I have a network slice that does what I need. In the other side, I may have the same number of routers, same slice, and now I want to tell it to minimize the, the cumulative delay to the destinations. And now, if I'm measuring the delay, and if the delay is being advertised in the IGP, which we can, we have extensions in TE, then IGP can now compute a, a delay that minimizes cumulative delay to the destination. And that is your violet arrow. The violet arrow will take me across a minimum delay. Well, I think the, the biggest highlight is this call out. How many MPLS labels in a segment routing network with source routing at the very beginning when the packet entries and no state afterwards, how many labels do I need to push to realize any of these two prior errors? And the answer is one label, a single seed. This is the flex algo seed that you told the IGP to compute a path for. So now we are doing SR traffic engineering with a single label. And for those of you who follow Merchant Silicon and the fact that many of these ASICs cannot push 10 labels or 11 or even 8 labels, then what? You're getting traffic engineer with a single label, first big gain. The second gain, if I have ECMP in the core and now I need to do ECMP for MPLS LSPs, I'm going to ask my network to only do a DPI of one label deep, which anybody can do. So there is a lot of benefits from the forwarding perspective and the simplification it brings to the end systems. It's also going to bring simplification and powerfulness to the use case that I'm going to show you um, in a little bit. Okay, so one person left. So I did not, I did not succeed fully. But now we can lock the doors. Donald, you there? You see, he's out. I told him. Anyways, we're going to go through the boring stuff a little bit, uh, which you might not find boring, by the way. 
uh, is the operation, how does it work? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to declare membership. What routers belong to what Flex Algo instance? And if you look at the picture I have in the upper right hand side, you can get a hint that the color of the line implies a Flex Algo instance. So I have my green routers and I have my red routers. We're going to call that algorithm P or algorithm Q, uh, K. Then I have a node on the red domain, or I call him N. So first thing, any router needs to advertise membership to a Flex Algo. A Flex Algo instance, K or P, can include all the routers or some of the routers. I have my slice or all of them. A router can belong to one or multiple Flex Algo instances. And remember, these Flex Algo instances, K and P, are in addition to what we call the algorithm zero. Algorithm zero is everybody. Again, to recap, we're not talking about different IGP processes. One IGP process that is running the entire topology of 10 routers in this previous in this picture with two flex algo instances K and P. So membership number one. So N belongs to flex algo K, M belongs to FlexAlgo K and P. Now the prefix seed. If I'm in an algorithm, most likely I'm going to be advertising a label on that algorithm. So if I look, for example, at prefix uh, node N, he will advertise a label, like 16,000 and N, for algorithm zero, and he will advertise a label 17,000 N for algorithm K. This is the algorithm that he belongs. If you look at M, he advertises three labels. Now, you said, war woman, what are these labels representing? These labels are associated with the loopback of M or the loopback of N. A single loopback is all you need on this solution. If I look at M, the loopback is 1.1.1.m, as an example, and now I have three labels associated with that prefix. The semantics are completely different. The algorithm zero means take me to M across the entire topology. 17,000 M means take me to M over the topology of K. 18,000 M, take me to M over the topology of P. Now, what is that topology looks like? You define it. Yeah. So the definition. The definition has to be consistent. All the routers in the Flex Algo instance need to be computing for the same goal. Otherwise, we have a problem. And the key thing that was done in the IETF draft, we'll talk about IETF in a moment, is how to make sure that you get consistent definition of the Flex Algos. The Flex Algo definition can be manually configure in the device. We can automate it, like Jason spoke about automation. I can automate it day zero, or I can manually configure it, or it can be flooded from a few nodes in my IGP. So I have multiple ways to learn the definition of the Flex Algo. <laughs> Again, one sample definition could be minimize the delay for members of topology K. The fourth thing, I think, is a, is a very uh, visual one. Well, I'm N, I belong to FlexAlgo K, it's now time for me to compute. But before I compute, I need to arrive at the topology of the FlexAlgo K. The topology of FlexAlgo K at N will prune any node that is not advertising Al uh, Algo K. So if I'm N, which is a red node, I will remove any node who's green. They're out. Within my flex algo K, I could have clauses for exclusion of links. Well, I remove those if they have to be excluded or included. <laughs> and what I have at the end is what we call the topology K, is the topology of the flex algo K. At that point, I run Dijkstra, and I run a flex algo, com I run a computation on topology K for all destinations on K. And I'm done from the IGP perspective. So now I have to go down to FIB. 
And what I will do is I will install a label cross connect in the FIB for the prefix seed entries that are advertised in K according or following the shortest path of the metric that K has. So identify topology, compute SPF, program label cross connects. This is perhaps a non-obvious but extremely powerful statement of this type of solution. When you tell me that I need to compute algo K for a slice to minimize delay, I'll give you my primary path to stay in the slice and minimize delay. For those of you who follow segment routing, you know that topology independent loop free alternate is one of the key reasons why people wanted to deploy SR five years ago, and they did with Cisco, is to get fast reroute with any topology limitations and 50 millisecond protection. The backup path in flex algo is computed following the same constraints of the flex algo K. So your primary and your backup, as an example, will minimize the delay. And it will never leave the red slice. It will stay in the red slice routers, both of them. There are customers who have had very stringent requirements and told us, I cannot afford 50, 75, or 100 milliseconds of traffic which are riding on the back of path, waiting for convergence, none of it. They all have to stay in their slice. And hence, you get that for free with this type of behavior. Even though I'm, I might have slipped and used ISIS as an IGP, even though I try not to speak only in ISIS terms, this technology is IGP agnostic. It applies to OSPF. It applies to ISIS. But what's going to be even more interesting, it applies to MPLS data plane. When I have to program this label cross connects, it will also apply to SRV6 when we're doing IPv6 based source routing. This technology is not Cisco proprietary. Uh, many of you will have a mandate to have dual vendor. Uh, you will be happy to learn that, uh, yes, we were the pioneers. Uh, there are people following and trying to catch up. Uh, in fact, uh, next week, I will be at, uh, in Germany, in Berlin, doing a public interop, where I'm hoping will be the first time interop of FlexAlgo. Uh, we will see how it goes. The drafts that you have in green are the ones that are more closely related to FlexAlgo. And the first one is actually one that actually speaks to how important was this idea even four years ago when you advertise a prefix seed in SR through IGP, we had a field four years ago that included the algorithm number. And this is what gave us, is giving us FlexAlgo right now with no changes to what we defined four years ago. What we have new is the, the second draft in the green shadow that defines the definition floating of a FlexAlgo in ISIS or OSPF. And then, the next draft is a draft that can pass the flex algo definition to a segment routing PCE. If you need to have a controller that is going to compute path based on flex algo. So I leave those references for your reading later on. So that was the boring part. I hope it was not too bad. Um, now we're going to go into the use cases. And uh, here is where I'm hoping that we can uh, see the, the, the value of these type of solutions. All the pictures we were using until now are basically a multiplane network. Uh, how many of you have dreamt of implementing a multiplane network that is simple to operate, that is scalable, uh, and that is so simple that there is no tomorrow for deployment? And in this case, yes, we have the multiplane with the green and the red plane. You can actually say algorithm zero will be the regular IGP computation, all the routers. The green plane, you, you, you tell us what to do. We can minimize IGP on the green plane. On the red plane, you tell us again, we can minimize the delay on the red plane. 
The definition of the algorithm is actually a number, and maybe this is the first time I show it to you. We call algorithm 128, algorithm 129. This is where the ranges start for, the, for your flex algos, 128 to 255. I think this is the visual of the evening. If I have a router number 9 that has one loopback and it has three labels for that loopback, algorithm 0, 128 and 129, with the MPLS label you see on the screen, what happens if node 0 were to push the, flex al the algorithm 0, which is the label 16009, off node 9? Well, the traffic that is going to leave that router 0 is going to be ECMP across both planes, and then it will be ECMP within each plane. And then I end up with these gray arrows I have on the picture. This is how segment routing works today. This is the regular algorithm zero from SR, for those of you who have played with it. But what, what would happen if I have router number zero sending traffic by pushing the algorithm 128 of 9? In this case, the label is 16,809. The network is going to be programmed based on the computation and the FIB installation I told you before, such that the traffic only goes to the green plane. And then from there, it will stay in the green plane. It will ECMP. Remember, this is the path for all my primaries and my backups in the green plane. So I go to 9 only <coughs> over the green plane. And you know by now what's going to happen if I were to push the label 16909. I'm going to go only to the red plane. According to the metric of your planes. Now, until now, we haven't made anything that makes money. We only have an IGP computer traffic engineer path. How do I put services on those, on those paths where I have something that I, I need to offer to my customers? And what you see in this slide is something that we call at Cisco automated steering for SRTE. And the, com the concept of automated steering is very clever. And let's start from the bottom if you read or if you follow me with the blue uh, text. And what I'm trying to say is that if I receive any service route with a particular color, where the color is a representation of the underlay SLA intent, I want to reach the BGP next hop of that route using the flex algo of my choice. So I say, oh, OK. That sounded good. Let's now take a look at the CLI. This is actual CLI from an iOS XR router. I have what we call a on-demand color template for color 100. And what that template is going to be triggered on is if I receive service routes with color 100. Now you guys apply the color. This is a BGP community. It's a BGP color community. The route is going to come with a BGP next hop. And if the template says, I want you to be constrained to the seed algorithm 128, I'm going to go to the BGP next hop of that route using the prefix seed of the BGP next hop on algo 128. That's the concept of automated steering. You only do coloring when you deploy the service, you color the routes, and then the network delivers the path. You don't have to configure any static routes, auto route announce, nothing. Just color the routes, and then the network takes you. This is what we call automated steering. You change the color of the route, and then the service goes through another path. Let's take a look. This is my multiplane. I have my configuration from the previous slide. But now I'm going to show service traffic, or control plane traffic going in for a route. Let's say I have a prefix 8 slash 8 is a VPN route has a VPN label 80,000, it has a color of 100. This is my BGP community. And then it has a BGP next hop of 9, 1.1.9. With, with the on-demand template I have on the slide, FIB is going to be programmed directly such that my VPN route A slash 8 will be programmed to do a push of two labels, the VPN label 
and the VIP, and, and then the SR, the label of my PGP next hop on Flexalgo 128. And that's the label 16809. If I push my service traffic with the VPN label and the label 16809, you already know what's going to happen. The traffic will go only over the green plane. So now you stop a moment and think, OK, wait a moment. You have a VPN. I can color all my prefixes in the VPN with one color, or I can color prefixes as I wish. This is what we call per destination automated steering. If we had more time, maybe next time if I get invited, we'll talk about per flow steering, where I can take flows over different paths through the network. That's per flow automated steering. So what would happen if I have another route in the same VPN, but this time it comes with no color? It's colorless. It's a regular advertising, no BGP color community. I go via both planes in my topology. And now I'm pushing the label of my BGP next hop, which is 16,009, which is my algorithm zero. And that's multiplane with flex algo. There is more, and I briefly, I already mentioned delay multiple times. With the update of 5G, and today, this week, is a Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, a lot of 5G talk. Cisco made a lot of announcements this week for SR. You may want to follow some of the press releases. But the reality is this. We're getting to the point that now the networks can measure delay on links. The delay is floated in the IGP, and then IGP can compute, or a controller can compute. What you see in the, on the slide on the upper half is, the, is the, delay, the minimum delay measured by the routers in this topology in microseconds, for example. You see also router number nine that has an algorithm zero, and it has an algorithm 128, which is configured to minimize delay. So here, in the bottom left, you have your ECMPs according to IGP from zero to nine, assuming that the IGP metrics are the same. I have two ECMPs. But if I were to push the label of nine using the algorithm 128, this is my path right now, with these delays I show you on the top, to get to 9, minimizing the delay. And the whole point, again, to reiterate, I have my traffic engineer path represented by the green arrow where I'm only pushing one label in segment routing. Another use case, and this is one of my favorite ones, it has to do with what we call intelligent secure paths. Imagine you have a network that has grown organically, and now you begin to deploy MaxSec on your links. Now, some of your links are MaxSec enabled because your existing hardware, you put a new line card, or maybe the existing one, you enable MaxSec on some line cards, but not on others. Or maybe you have MaxSec on a new node, but not on the old nodes. I can now deploy a flex algo with the semantics to say, I want to reach any destination in my flex algo K that only traverses MaxSec links. And how do we do this? Well, very simple. We just piggyback on existing concepts. We color the links with an affinity or an admin group. And then we tell flex algo to avoid or include a particular link color. In this case, I'm going to do an, avoid, an avoidance of unencrypted. So if I don't do flex algo, you know what's going to happen. It's CMP from 0 to 9. But if I do flex algo in the way how I defined it, I'm going to go through from 0 to 9 only using MaxSec links. And again, primaries and backups will only use MaxSec links with one label. And my last use case is another one that is also of interest to many carriers actually here in Europe, is what we call traffic engineering for high bandwidth link preference. Again, your network has grown over time. You have low speed, medium speed, and high speed links. I have one gig, 10 gig, 100 gig. In the future, you will have 400 gig pretty soon. I want to define a flex algo that only takes me over links a path that only takes me over links that are 
for example, 100 gig or a more or more or above. That's my ask. Same concept. You color the links affinity groups, they get flooded. IGP can now compute the path. So now you can realize a path from 0 to 9 that only traverses 100 gig links or above. Again, in conclusion, I'm hoping that I was able to, uh, well, for sure, this is a very new technology that we have available now, is shipping uh, in Cisco products. So you are more than welcome to uh, begin to test it and use it. <coughs> and the key concepts are FlexAlgo is really one member of the SRT family, where you can now define your, your segments in the way how you want them to behave. It gives you a traffic engineer path computed by the IGP. It only needs one label to do it. But more importantly, as you evaluate our FlexAlgo with somebody else's FlexAlgo, see how the solution integrates with automated steering, with on-demand policies, with TILFA. And with that, I just want to leave you uh, in the back a few links that you can follow to stay in touch. The most important one is number one with the segmentwriting.net. The last one is also very important. Uh, Cisco uh, brought the, the only available textbooks of SR out there, literally textbooks. We have a few here. Uh, part one is already out. Uh, part two is in pre-order, uh, focused completely on traffic engineering. And with that, I'll be available later on to talk more if you wish. And I want to thank you for your time.